Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio. We are brought to you by championnews.net. And be sure you catch our YouTube video on this at Champion News Online because we're going to have pictures of all these buildings. What we're describing here is, is there's a lot of visual components that go to it. But um, we have Tom Roser with us, and we're talking about the let, rebirth. Let me, uh, let me take this on a little bit different tour. Okay. Um, I'm big on uh, one thing is the American dream. And... Uh, I, I've lived the American dream very much. Uh, I started uh, this auto engineering thing, which is $5,000 back in 1961. Uh, before that, I'd started uh, two companies, one for uh, actually the president of Duesenberg. Uh, that uh, sounds too old, but that was before me. But he's a very rich man, and I built a, a company in aircraft switches for him. I left him after about seven years because I was eager to get off on my own. Seven and I struck time. a deal with the Illinois Tool Works to start a new division for them. I did, and I worked there about seven years. And uh, nothing wrong with Illinois Tool. They're a great company, good people. And I, uh, I had a very fine uh, success in building a new division for them, the Lycon division. And, uh, but I got to be 38 years old, and I definitely wanted to be in business my own. I thought uh, as a lousy politician, and I would never get ahead in a really big company, I better start my own. So in 1961, mm -hmm. I left them on good terms and started auto engineering with just $5,000 worth of cash. I uh, quickly realized that it was going to take too long to get in this aircraft switch business, highly technical. Uh, you got to work with these big companies and let them start building more airplanes before you could sell more switches to them. So I started another company making uh, a, a equipment for applying the new epoxy adhesives and putting things together, assembling things with turntables. I'm an engineer. I design all kinds of things. How many we, patents do you have, Jack? Uh, I'm not, I don't really know. Some people a say gazillion. 50, but uh, <laughs> a lot. In all ki I've got a patent uh, running right now on a new way to flush a toilet, so I can't get away from <laughs> changing things. But uh, at Problem any, solver. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that was the uh, genesis of the company, uh, and uh, the equipment thing made enough money that I could live and uh, develop. I uh, never borrowed. Uh, this company has never been a borrowing company. You can imagine what I think of politicians mm -hmm, mm -hmm. put our company, country, so much in debt. Mm -hmm. uh, and auto engineering is uh, uh, still family owned and uh, it's grown a great deal. Uh, Tom's been with us uh, uh, over 25 years now and uh, I got it to a staging area where uh, Tom uh, managed uh, what I had built to that point uh, wonderfully well. Better manager than I could have been. I'm a gyro screw loose uh, inventor, starter, entrepreneur, all those things. But Tom came along and uh, managed and contributed, expanded the business. Um, we've, the auto engineering here is a vertical corporation. By that I mean we don't build this stuff in China or some other town. We have all of the manufacturing in our site on this beautiful Fox River. In, we do have some Arkansas. offshore assembly of things that are high volume and don't necessarily need a lot of attention to detail. About 10 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we may have a die shop here uh, that does all of the stamping. We make our own stamping tools. Um, we, have a, we do a lot of molding. We have all, all these huge molding presses, uh, making uh, things that take uh, plastics, not, not the 70 cent a pound stuff that you make kish appliances out of, but the six and seven dollar a pound plastics that go into aircraft parts. And uh, we make our, many of our own molds. We do our own molding. Uh, we do our own assembly, we've got a huge en engineering department, and we've got a big test lab. And all of that's an uh, integrated vertical company that Tom has uh, built, has t uh, taken the start that I gave it, and has built a, a very uh, a profitable corporation uh, of a considerable size, and we're still growing. We will outgrow this huge building in about 10 years. Really? 
uh, if the economy comes back. What I see in Washington doesn't uh, make that <laughs> look as optimistic as it used to be. But uh, it really is a terrific manufacturing company. And we don't have any sole source products. We compete with all of our uh, competitors are way bigger than us and should have swatted us out of the marketplace before we even got started. Honeywell makes exactly the same products that we make. Motorola makes exactly the same products that we make. Eat the distributors of these things like us better because being a vertical company like this, we please the, uh, the distributors and our customers because why? We can respond to them. And our I, quality is great, our response is terrific. I joke about this, but uh, invariably every four years there's going to be an inauguration. And the Tuesday before the inauguration, we will get a call that, by golly, they need 2,000 surveillance accessories for the police. We forgot about that. And we can turn that for them. And that's why we do. But we make a, a Honeywell or a bigger company cannot do that because they're not as close to the manufacturing. We respond to I'm the hearing. opportunity. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we got quick response time. Our engineers and our ability to make the the uh, parts uh, from tools that we make on site uh, it gives us a terrific uh, quality and response to thing. These guys that are, are making one part here, another one in Mexico, and the rest in China, and uh, selling them internationally, those guys are spread too thin to have the quality and the, the, the startup time that we've got. Okay. So, at the end of the day, you can go ahead by being a vertical manufacturing company, have a quicker turnaround and a quicker response time to the customers. And we have systems in place. But, you know, the story of Otto is more than just being a manufacturing company. Um, I think our employees feel like they are winners. And they're winners because, one, they do a very good job. They compete against people who should beat them. They're proud to see their products on a fireman or a policeman or when... Um, uh, Sullenberger landed that airplane. One of the auto switches are what made the turbine that made the electronics keep going while the plane was totally without power. Those kind of so the they feel like they're winners. Still worked. The guy landed that thing in the river, but he was in control. But as we have been able to invest in some of the capital structure around here, when Jack bought the property on the east side of the river back in 1979, the first thing he did was he cleaned the front of the building, which was to give people the understanding that there was a new gang in town <laughs> to invest in them. And I had a tuck pointed. It happened to be a, a, a Polish uh, type of uh, brickwork company that did this cleaning up and, and tuck pointing. They loved doing this to the building because the brickwork was, especially in the upper parts, was fancy. They, we've been doing it with them for over 30 years, triple A tuck pointing. Uh, Terrific. <laughs> They're all Eastern European uh, well, people that have tremendous skills. But as we have been able to buy the different buildings down here in the Illinois Iron and Bolt area, uh, we've taken an area that used to be a slum and iconic to Carpentersville and turned it into a destination that this is just beautiful down here. And uh, we couldn't have done that without the, uh, the power of our manufacturing company. Uh, we wouldn't have done it if we didn't have faith in the future for our manufacturing company, but uh, it has been a terrific result for us. Our employees are all excited about being part of it, but for the town and um, uh, others. I'll stick it in here. One, one statement. Um, these more than 25 years you've been here, we've never had a loud word or left the room mad. Never. We could start. Oh. <laughs> you know, when, uh, when we I got along, really, because we had confidence in each other and uh, in the abilities that each brought to this thing. And you were a godsend to this company and your ability to uh, bring a, a new line of stuff, uh, making uh, communication stuff that we didn't make before, started a whole new line of business in addition to the other one. And... Uh, your your ability to bring things together has been great. Well, I'm hearing so many different things. I'm hearing adding value to the community by not only jobs, but the beautification of the community, bringing things back. And the best the thing that I heard from this last segment from you, Tom, is that your, your team, everybody that works for your company, for Otto, is a team, and they have pride and ownership of being part of this team. We're going to talk more with Tom Roser and Jack when we come back after the break. Stay with us.